So getting your winter accommodation is here? Yeah. Um, basically, having, everything comes in at night, mid-October. Right. Um, then they'll they'll be out doing there probably till mid-November, end of November. Um, yeah, everything cubicle housed. Um, and then we've got a, uh, an empty shed in the middle there for carving time. Yes. Um, everything carving down on straw. Starting first week in Feb. So we're all these sheds here, <laughs> historically, or are they, um, are they, when you yeah. convert it, were they built? All the sheds here, um, I think they were built back in 2005. Yeah. Um, they were all lambing sheds. Yes. Basically, uh, the, the Richard was lambing about 18, and he was all indoors. Quite, um, yeah, quite, quite a lot of work, actually, and, yeah. Pending yeah. more and carrying more out then. Yeah. Yeah. So the, these were here. So for the conversion, what what buildings were added or what? Uh, conversion wise, basically uh, all the yards, the silage pit, the calf shed, the parlour, the slinger pit. Basically everything except what you see behind us, the three sheds, and there's a small yard in front. It's all new back in. 20 back in 2017 for milk came down 2018. Right, yeah. And, and what, what is the milk and parlour? Milk and parlour is a uh, Waikato 24 on side, uh, swing over, milking, yeah, at the moment about 250 cows, just under two hours ish. Is that um, one man or one two man? Milk one, one man, one man. There's two of us here full time, um, doing carving, you know, February, March, possibly we'll put two in the parlour sometimes just with the cost and up and stuff, but it was really just one of us. And it's quite comfortably a one-man yeah. parlour as well. Yeah. ACRs, um, we uh, just post spray. Yeah, we start at six in the morning and 3 p.m. PM in the afternoon. Yeah, mm. quite an easy, yeah, efficient parlour. Yeah. Efficient parlour. So feeding-wise yeah. in the winter? Uh, Feed-wise in the winter, just... Manage it? Mostly round bales, um, when we dry a bit, bit of hay, all in bunkers and green feeders. Um, so we've, feeders like this here? Yeah, yeah, yeah just green feeders basically. Yeah. We've, we've put quite a bit of, whole, we've changed the system a bit since a couple of years actually, just because we've been with with yeah, having yeah. really dry summers and stuff. Mm. We, we've put quite a lot of whole crop in. Um, so we use that during the winter months as well. Uh, it grows well by the time it's dry, basically it's already grown quite well and it doesn't seem to affect the, the volume of it and the quantity, yeah. It just it seems to work well. We put some maize in as well. Uh, and we feed maize during February, March, April, just as a buffer with grass and just to pull the concentrate down the pallet yeah. a bit. And that's um, just tipped into the rings. Just tipped into the rings, yeah. Help yeah. They want. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, during the summer months, if it gets really dry, starting today, probably we'll, we'll put some silage maize out on the field for them as well, just to keep time on the yard to a minimum, just with it going so slippery because of the, of the weather we're having, actually. Mm. So just to pull them out. So scraping this then is... Uh, scraping every day. Yeah. Um, yeah, you need to learn to, yeah, that's the problem with the yards, even though it's moved, if you don't get get, get in, it, it just goes slippery, doesn't it? And right. Yeah, scraping yeah. every day. Yeah. Um, as I was saying, cows, yeah, they're in probably over milking for two hours and then straight out. Yes. Yeah. We'll just carry what they need more than that out with, you know, with their mix wagon and stuff, yeah. You've a lagoon out here, have you, for your slurry? Yeah, um, lagoon out. Um, we start carrying a bit of dirty water from it over the fields during the last month. Um, we'll follow the cows probably all summer. Yeah, and it's something something pe uh, that people wouldn't have been doing up the last um, two or we, three years, but people see a value in it now, don't they, with the drier we, weather? We yeah, and, and the price of nitrogen as well, probably. Mm. Um, up to this year, we have followed the cows a bit with the pipe. 
but probably this year we'll, we'll, we'll make better use of it and carry it out regularly with a tanker. Yeah. yeah. Just to make, uh, definitely there's, there's valuable nut nutrients in it and just to make better use of it. Yes. Yeah. In the future, do you see NVZs posing a threat to you or? Uh, de definitely is going to change a bit on how we how we operate, how we farm. Um, hopefully, with with the land where we where we call the all the forage and everything, that it won't affect us too much. We can just carry um, slurry from here, basically, and it will it won't affect us yeah. too much. But uh, we'll have to wait and see really and see what. Yeah. And up to now, getting like you haven't had restrictions in terms of slurry storage requirements. Um, like us in Ireland, not a, not at all. Really, you know. it's been quite free on when when to spread it, and yeah, there's no, there's nothing been. Yeah, but that's about to change. I think from next year on, is I think it? It's going to people need to October have, 2024. Yes. Okay, people need to have yes. certain yes. capacity in, yeah. in place. Yeah, and I think it's five months. Okay, it's going to be five months. And will, you, will that affect your stocking rate, or...? Um, we, we, at the moment, we're, we're running four cows a hectare. Possibly, we, we'll have to pull it down a bit. But hopefully, as I was, as I was saying, with the, with the, with the uh, forage area and everything, hopefully, it, we won't have to do too much. We, we, we'll be all right. Yeah. We'll, Just because of the three farms, we're carrying a lot of young stock as well. So, so that uh, that factors in on top of the cows is, is quite 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 a lot. I guess going head forward, between everything basically. I guess going forward, you'll try and only have enough replacements then. Yeah, but our our plan is we we've we've started this year using quite a lot of sex semen to try, um, and going forward we will. We will be using more sex semen, more beef, calves, so we can sell them on, you know, at two or three weeks, hopefully. Um, yeah, at the moment we've been carrying a lot of replacements we don't need. And I'm not sure where the, where the market is going to be either, going forward. Depends on expansion and... Yeah. yeah. You'll see. Yeah. So we're in a dry period at the moment. We're in the first week of June, and the drought is biting here for you. It seems to be a normality going forward. It's uh, yeah. been milking here since 2018. This is a sixth lactation, um, and I think we've had four or five quite dry summers. Where we had we've had to supplement feed a lot during those summer months. Yeah. Um, it's actually cash quite bad in the last week now, beginning of June. I don't think we've had rain until well we haven't had rain since the end of April. Just in the beginning of May. Okay. So cows are being fed silage, silage on the yards, milking time, and carrying silage mares out for them on the field now as well, right. just to try and keep production up. And hence why you, you changed maybe your tax a small bit last year, growing maize? Yeah, maize, um, <laughs> maize doesn't seem to be affected too much with the dry summer. Mm. Even though it did a quite a dry spell last, you know, back in 2022, we still had a cracking crop of maize. And it's quite handy we needed to buffer the February, March, April with the grass. But it's quite handy to have it now as well to feed out of the field in the dry yeah. spell. We were all um, grass silage, basically clamp and big bales. Mm. But we've cha we changed, as we were saying, last two years, we've uh, gone quite a lot of maize, quite a lot of whole crop. It just seems that they can withstand the dry weather a, yeah. a lot better. Okay. So on to breeding, um, getting yeah. your... So have you bulls in or are you still doing AI or...? 
Um, bull's in since 10 days. We, we did just short of four weeks, AI. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was quite a bit of sex semen, quite a bit conventional, um, mostly Frisian stars. Yeah. He was quite a bit of Hagrid as well. Um, for four weeks, I, I, I'm running crossbow bulls with him now. And just to finish off a 10 week block. Right. Where hopefully usually up to rates are under 10%. Okay. Uh, usually between 6 and 7%. Okay. When, um, when selecting your bulls, what criteria, what sort of cow are you looking for? Um, because we're on a U3 contract, we're, we're pu probably pushing a lot on fat and fat and protein. That, that's a big, fat and protein is big when, when selecting a bull. Yeah. Um, going over to the freezer, not, not, I'm pushing for probably 530, 540 kilo cow. So I'll try to keep off the the bigger bulls. That'll give me because my, because my herd is quite heavily freezing already. I have to watch that I'm not going too much yeah. into the freezing. I'd say we're running a three quarter freezing quarter jersey herd now anyway. So I just want to maintain that really. Is that is that to maintain litres and milk solids or? Cow values, calf values—is that all playing in? Um, I think the system, you know, we can't push the, the the type of cow we want for the system. I'm, I personally I think for here, a five thirty, five forty kilo three quarter Frisian cow is suitable. You know, it's not it's not long walks uphill. I think the the most that, that, to the furthest field is about 0.7 of a kilometre. Um, yeah, basically a bit, bit of every, everything, getting the litres. I'm probably pushing between six. To, last year, they did about 6,400 litres, 530 kilos of solids. Um, so basically trying try to keep that 6,500 litre, five, hopefully 550 kilos of solids. And getting a decent cow value and a decent calf value. Yeah. yeah. How much concentrating that? A ton. Yeah. Just looking at four okay. cows to extra. So you're you're putting crossbred bulls in shortly. Say yeah. You, if yeah. You, if you have a heifer calf off of that, are you are you rearing that calf? We're looking at the other calf. Um, um. And hopefully, yeah, sell it along basically. Naturally, we keep all the AI heifers, you know, on farm for ourselves or most of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. However, however much we want, really, but uh, otherwise everything gets sold. So, Matthew, if I can ask you, what stock are you selling from a farm like this and what systems will they suit? So, we're selling, um, annually we sell surfacing calf heifers and the outer block. Uh, milking cows um, because of the size of the cow they are the 550 kilo cow and they've got the potential for doing 6,400 litres if you point to an autumn block herd or an all-year round carving herd they will potentially do seven and a half eight thousand litres um, we are seeing a bigger and bigger demand for that sort of cow everybody seems to want the middle ground cow that if, if milk price is good, you can feed her a little bit harder and she'll get the litres. If milk price is poor, they can pull the feed off and she'll survive quite well on grass. Um, this, you know, this, this, this sort of cow is, is what a lot of people are looking for now. So would you be encouraging getting to extend, say, breeding periods then to the sellers? I know there's a balance between that and not having cows calf lace and what? Yes, it, it, it is really. Um, Just you know, to extract a bigger value, I suppose, of the call. I, th I think they are giving, the cows are given enough chance to get in calf and like the the April, May, June, end of April, the May, June carvers are sold off, the end of block is sold off. Um, there's always a market for that sort of cow every year, so you know, I'd encourage any spring carver really is to keep the bulls and then keep serving. Because uh, there is a market for that end of block cow every year. Yeah, and good t good TB status here as well. 
very good TB status here. It is equivalent to TB4. They are on 12 month testing, uh, but no prevent movement testing is needed uh, with them. Yes. That's great. Thank you for your time. No problem. Thank you.